Hey, good evening, everybody. Got a late start here on the uh, webcast, so I'm a little bit behind the curve. And uh, let's go ahead and get things started. Well, we've had a whole lot of rain in Texas. There's the radar composite precipitation totals for the past 14 days. This uh, magenta color inside central Texas, that's 10 to 15 inches of rain. This uh, outer area of red coloring is 5 inches. So that's uh, quite a bit of rain and it looks like the heaviest amounts that I'm seeing are around the Crockett area down to about Centerville all the way down to maybe College Station that's running about 10 to 20 inches. So needless to say there's been quite a bit of uh, rivers that are over flood stage. And I'm sure some of you have seen uh, some of the flooding on the Alano River. Some of those pictures have gone viral. Anyway, we've got kind of a clear uh, day, and it's getting a little bit of a respite here. And there's the uh, surface map at this time, high pressure across the Great Lakes area. And that's putting most of the Midwest and southern U.S. and south central U.S. under a northerly component. So is the Gulf open? No. In fact, we can look down there and see that there's a uh, low pressure area that's helping to bring northerly flow along the coast, giving us an off offshore component. Things are getting stormy out there in the western Canadian region up to Alaska. And you can see that 976 millibar low out around, uh, looks like, south of uh, Anchorage. So that's going to be the first of a series of Pacific systems working inland. All right, let me uh, take a look at chat, make sure we don't have any problems going on with the stream. So let me switch over here. Uh, JT there in northern Illinois reporting 44 degrees. Erica Baker, Coffeyville, Kansas, northeast winds with 64. David Lumbert in Arkansas, 63 over 47. And uh, Atlantic City, Bill K reporting 60. And uh, we got Fun with Tech there. Andrew Hotchkiss checking out the uh, flood pictures there. And Ryan Toomey is with us and mentioning the uh, chance of rain coming up for later this week. So there's the uh, current conditions. Texas is under that north easterly flow and we've got a bit of upslope developing out in West Texas there. So we can see the those easterly winds, Amarillo, Lubbock, down to Midland and they're starting to pick up some of the IFR cloud cover and that's going to be a lot of uh, stratus and stratocumulus in that area. And we can see that as you go from North Texas the dew point depression is about 24 degrees, narrows down to about 21 around Abilene and then you can see it drops off to about 3 degrees in the Midland area. So this kind of illustrates the increasing relative humidity as the parcels move upslope and into the higher terrain of West Texas. So we do have a little bit of a front uh, southwest of Texas, probably back in this area here of Mexico. We can see that uh, there's some low overcast in, northwest, in northeastern Mexico. And as you get out towards New Mexico, They've got easterly winds and a little bit of uh, drizzle and rain being indicated in that area. And even out around Tucson and Phoenix, they're getting the rain and easterly winds there. So that right there is a definite red flag that there is a uh, kind of a backdoor front moving through that area. Okay, let's go to the chart sequence, see what things are looking like tonight. Upper level 250 millibar chart up at 34,000 feet. Let me get the centered here. And there we can see a continuation of the uh, split flow pattern that we uh, were seeing back on Sunday. Let me get my cursor back. Give me just a second. Hang on a second. Let me get my cursor situated. And we should be good to go. So let me open up the uh, maps again and we'll give that one more try. So northerly stream up there all the way up into Northwest Territories coming down into the Great Lakes area, 
got that almost semi-permanent trough and I could swear that trough has been out there for like six or seven months now maybe even longer almost continuous maybe I would say probably 80 percent of the time there seems to be a trough there and then we've got uh, what looks like a cutoff load trying to develop in the southwestern US right in that area it's still an open wave at this time and the trough is running kind of like that there's a ridge from the Texas Panhandle up to the High Plains and anything else uh, maybe a little bit of an indication of a subtropical jet possible I don't know this is a southern stream polar front jet right there but I'm seeing I don't know that that could be part of the uh, polar front jet so you know what we do when things are in question we go down to the lower levels and uh, let's see let me bring up the 500 generally when we have a, a subtropical jet in the area we would see some of the uh, stronger flow at 500 millibars in well we're seeing about 20 30 knots so that's likely part of the polar front jet there on the Gulf Coast do we have any moisture coming up into Texas and the southern plains for that matter well we look at the 850 millibar chart and we see that the Gulf is uh, maybe a tiny bit open up at 850 right there can see dew points almost to 60 degrees there at Brownsville and Corpus Christi but you go a little bit further north and we pick up that northeasterly flow so this is probably indicating maybe a little bit of that uh, front down there in South Texas maybe that's going to start coming back up as a warm front so that's something we're going to keep an eye on as we go through the GFS chart sequence Cold air advection in full effect in the northeast U.S. There it is, northwesterly flow, bringing uh, very cool temperatures at 850 into that uh, part of the country. And then on the other side of this uh, Bear Clinic High, we've got the warm air advection starting on the high plains, but not quite tapping into that moisture just yet. The uh, thickness in isobars this evening that should uh, kind of reinforce and confirm what we saw on the surface chart there surface bear clinic high over Minnesota so we're picking up the warm air advection in this area right here and on of course on the other side there's our cold air advection coming into the northeast US so this is showing probably a frontal system looking a little bit like that right there and then the older frontal system way down in the Gulf of Mexico I would say the situation looks probably about like that right there so that uh, this area right here this is a bear clinic zone and we can see the tropical cyclone making landfall there and that's something we need to pull up also that's going to be riding over the uh, cold dome here and then maybe tapping into some of this thermal gradient off the uh, South Texas coast. So wh what are we talking about? Uh, Willa. So that was a category four storm earlier now down to category three making landfall pressures are coming up to 965 millibars and that's going to rapidly dissipate as it moves inland uh, the mountain ranges Sierra Madre Occidental will be tearing up that circulation but the moisture will be moving inland and moving into Texas starting around maybe sometime uh, later tomorrow looks like the main track of that will be heading toward the Rio Grande Valley and towards looks like Corpus Christi according to NHC soundings uh, let's see let's look at Fort Worth let me see if the evening soundings are in This is going to get a lot easier when we go on uh, daylight savings time or when we lose daylight savings time we'll be starting our stream at uh, zero one Z and the soundings will be definitely be in every night so uh, yeah that's the evening sounding and uh, we see a very prominent dry layer up at about 5,000 and even the lower la layers are kind of dry but we go a little bit aloft 700 millibars I don't know if you uh, saw in that opening clip 
on a few of the scenes, you could see a little bit of outer cumulus building in. I would have to run the uh, footage back to show you, but uh, yeah, there's a little bit of outer cumulus in that layer right there, and that's probably the start of some of that warm air advection that may be uh, clouding things up here in the next day or so. We'll just take a quick look at Midland out there. We know that they've got that upslope flow going. The column is uh, humid all the way up to about 25,000 feet there. And you can see that southeasterly flow, about 15 to 20 knots there in very humid conditions. Let's try Brownsville. They're going to be along and south of that front that is down in the Gulf of Mexico. Don't have the uh, current observation. I can't wait until we get off daylight savings. This is annoying. All right, so yeah, Brownsville this morning looked like that, and you can see a front on version right there. Very shallow, only about a 1,500, 2,000 feet thick. Still got a little bit of uh, northerly push there underneath that uh, front on version. So I'm going to be expecting the flow to start turning around to the south probably in the next day or so. And uh, the lapse rate looks uh, conditionally unstable all the way up. So it does, it's not going to take much to get thunderstorms out of that profile. You just need a, need a little bit of upward uh, motion that will help steepen these lapse rates a little bit further and bring it to the left of this moist 80 bat, and that will help uh, get showers going pretty easily. All right, looking at the uh, visible imagery for the uh, country, Roll that back to earlier today, and we see that most of the problems are in Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. A lot of uh, activity going on. A lot of it's uh, high clouds. Uh, we do see some mid-level clouds, and then we get uh, down in here, and those are convective elements. And SPC, they do have a uh, marginal th risk area. We'll bring that up, and... Uh, yeah, there it is right there. Getting a lot of that uh, thunderstorm activity in that area. However, only a few isolated hail reports in that part of the country and no watches. We can take a closer look at those uh, storms by going down to the close-up sector. Since it's uh, getting pretty late in the day, we're going to use infrared imagery. But if we back this up a little bit, you can see the showers popping up there around uh, Nogales to just south of Tucson. Pretty good uh, flare up during the afternoon and producing a lot of anvil cloud throughout uh, the Arizona New Mexico border area. Looking up in the uh, northern plains, we see an uh, incursion of cold air. You can actually make out the uh, rivers and lakes where it's a little bit warmer, and you can even see Minneapolis right there. So we go a little bit earlier during the day, and you can see it was, uh, with the warmer temperatures, we get darker shades there. This is going to be about uh, midday, and we can see some pretty hot temperatures around, well, I'm not going to say hot, but uh, certainly warm around Paducah, up into St. Louis and Columbia, and then very rapid cooling with the evening conditions there. So probably a very good uh, diurnal temperature range in that part of the country. Down in... Uh, Texas, there's all that high and mid-level cloud system coming in from the uh, southwest, and we do have that we do have that uh, southwesterly flow. I'm trying to animate it, but I can't get that to, to do it, but you can see the striations on the cloud field looking like that right there. So winds aloft out of about 230, 240, and that's a good sign that we've got uh, some more rain on the way. Northeast uh, U.S. looks uh, cold once again. Upper level low right around uh, Plattsburgh. And let me slow that down just a little bit. So it looks like the uh, center of the upper level low right in this area right there. And then just to the south, we see convective elements. This is all towering cumulus. Some of it's uh, lake effect snows and other elements of this are just cold air advection. Uh, they're very steep lapse rates and unstable conditions. 
And I would expect uh, if you were having a uh, board a flight out around Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Rochester, probably some very strong mechanical turbulence below 10,000. So very gusty conditions in that part of the country. And then taking a look down in the southeast U.S., got some uh, high clouds, broken overcast conditions associated with that southern stream of that polar front jet. And we can get turbulence in that, but we're talking more clear air turbulence. And that would be up at uh, 25, 35,000 feet. And I would look for that in the northern periphery of where that jet is, maybe in this area right here. And sometimes these transverse bands that you see right there, that can be a very good indication, especially this herringbone pattern right there. That's a good indication of possible clear air turbulence. So it could be a bumpy ride if you're going from Miami to say New York City or Washington DC, probably about halfway through that flight, you'd probably be getting bumped around a little bit. All right, so that's how things uh, look. Uh, really not a whole lot going on this evening, but uh, I think come Thursday, we're probably gonna have a whole lot more to look at. So over the next uh, 12 to 15 hours, yeah, there's that rain building in. I haven't even seen these animations yet since I was running a bit behind. But it uh, looks like kind of an MCS developing out around El Paso, Roswell, and up to the Tucumcari area. And you can see that spreading into West Texas during the morning tomorrow. So around midday Wednesday, a lot of that rain will be moving into the I-35 corridor and up towards Wichita Falls and uh, west of Oklahoma City. So we'll look at the upper level patterns and uh, look at, this is 500 millibar heights and vorticity. And we can see the first of uh, many waves approaching the central U.S. There's one right there and embedded in this area right here. That's probably the remains of, of uh, tropical or of Hurricane Willa. And then we go out to the Pacific and we see one, two, three, and maybe a fourth wave about to approach the U.S. And the ridge is not terribly amplified there, so I think these have got pretty good potential for digging into the uh, lower 48. So during the day on Wednesday into Wednesday night, there is the remains of Willa. Looks like the stronger flow passing over Texas right there. You can see the height field is pinched together. So these are going to be stronger winds aloft. So that means stronger bulk shear and maybe a little bit of storm organization. And then that'll spread out into the Mississippi Valley and into parts of the Midwest around Thursday. Okay, here's one wave coming in from the uh, Great Plains. Here's another one lining up. And uh, there's the jet stream out in the Pacific. So let's see what the uh, next change is going to be. Well, it looks like uh, the development of northwesterly flow and a pretty strong jet max in uh, Montana on Saturday. Depending on what the uh, moisture field is like on Saturday, this uh, is a good pattern during the cool season for supporting thunderstorms in Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. So the question is how much moisture there is in the low levels. If dew points are in the 50s or 60s, I think there's probably good potential for this wave to trigger thunderstorm activity in that part of the country. So again, we're talking over the weekend. The next uh, wave starts uh, digging into the Central Plains on Sunday. And this chart here has kind of a cold appearance. You can see all this troughing. This is indicating a lot of cold air across eastern Canada and the Midwest right there. And then you can see the Southern wave off in the Pacific digging in very rapidly and we'll advance things up to uh, mi early next week into midweek. Yep, here comes uh, the next wave. It looks like it's uh, breaking off development of a split flow. This is around Wednesday the 31st. And we shear off a, a cutoff low once again at around Baja, California. And uh, with the northerly component aloft being out of the north across much of the U.S., this uh, does look like a cold pattern continuing. 
All right, next big change is going to be, well, this one wave rotates through Texas on the third, and then we've got this other one approaching. Another cutoff low around the uh, fifth, and then this wave here will be going through the central and northern plains around uh, fifth into the sixth. And I believe uh, the sixth, I think that's uh, Willa coming on shore. And we can just barely trace the circulation crossing Mexico. And it's hard to tell where it is. Uh, it really tears that circulation apart. Maybe a trace of something right there. Wednesday evening around, uh, that'd be about 3 or 4 p.m. But it looks like a lot of the precip is going to be somewhat elevated as that moves eastward. There it is right there, a little bit of a mesoscale system moving over Texas. And I think uh, one issue is that we haven't had a whole lot of moisture return. Certainly, I mean, you can see that on the surface chart. Dew points are only in the 40s and 50s. So getting a whole bunch of moisture back up into Texas over the next 24, 36 hours, that's going to be kind of difficult. So I think uh, we, we do have the potential for precipitation over the next day or two. However, this dry air is going to kind of temper a lot of the potential for heavy rain. So anyway, it's going to be moving eastward, and this is uh, the map on early Friday. And let's see, we get up to Saturday, and that's when we were talking about that wave moving across Florida. However, it looks like uh, we're bringing a fresh front through western Florida. See that northwesterly flow right there? So that may actually limit some of the potential. And what we can do is uh, look at the dew point. We'll switch over to this chart here. Look at the GFS. And this uh, purple that you see out here in the Gulf, that's going to be 70s dew points. That's certainly enough to support thunderstorms. So let's see what happens. It looks like the circulation pulls out of the Houston area late tomorrow night, developing into a front. And we talked about that on Sunday, how the remains of Willow was going to pick up that boundary. And you can see the moisture plume right there, some 70s dew points all the way up to Apalachicola. Friday morning, and then that pushes through the rest of uh, Florida on uh, late Friday. So the uh, surface patterns may kind of outrun the upper level patterns. So it'll be a close one. All right, so anyway, we can check that out on Thursday. Still got some time before that happens. And then just looking at the uh, long term, let's check this out. Yeah, fresh outbreak of cold air coming south. This is on Sunday, 1036 millibar high and lots of uh, cool Pacific air coming southward. That sweeps into Texas early next week. New system going through central Canada, and as that moves eastward, another push of Pacific air coming in. This is air that's originating from the Gulf of Alaska in British Columbia. This is on Wednesday, Halloween. So let's see, who's going to get rain on Halloween evening? There's the GFS forecast on Halloween. I would say probably Tulsa, Springfield, Missouri, and uh, maybe Sherman, Wichita Falls, Denton, maybe some potential there. But uh, other than that, I don't, I don't see a whole lot of potential elsewhere in the country. It looks uh, pretty good everywhere else. And let's see, next change coming up. Uh, there's the next system coming in from Western Canada for the 4th and 5th. And looks like a third shot of Pacific air sweeping into the Great Plains. So it doesn't look too terribly cold over the next two weeks, but uh, we will get some very fresh Pacific air masses moving in through just about all of the country. And then as we get into November, we're going to probably have to start looking north again to see what's going on in uh, northern Canada, because uh, we are 
starting to get into winter here. Maybe not the uh, meteorological winter, but it is going to start getting very, very cold here probably in a few weeks. All right, one last check it on the chat here. JT reporting the sound is good. Mike Estrick reporting 61 in Denver with cloudy skies. Ryan Toomey is reporting cooler in Florida with passing showers. Reminding to hit that like button. I do appreciate that. Got uh, 20 viewers in the stream. Andrew Hotchkiss reporting uh, water temperatures on Lake Erie. Two degrees Fahrenheit below normal. Yeah, a lot of the uh, cold air that we see in that part of the country, the origin of that is from uh, Western Canada, Northwest Territories, Yukon, Alaska. So, yeah, the, the, the Great Lakes can modify the air masses a little bit through a very shallow layer, but the sheer volume of air that's involved in these uh, outbreaks from Canada, that kind of overwhelms what's in the Great Lakes. And, uh, yeah, the origin of that is uh, mostly from... Yeah, as I mentioned, Northwest Territories, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. So we'll probably be checking out those places again as we get into Thursday or the Sunday webcast. Severe king tides impacting coastal areas of the state, flooding into the homes and canals. Hmm. All right, well, that's going to be uh, all for this evening. Thanks again for joining. and. I think, uh, aside from me getting behind schedule earlier today, I think uh, technically we're doing pretty good. All right, uh, y'all take care, have a good evening, and we will talk to you on Thursday. Bye-bye.